How are you feeling about Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, mate? Overall, let's let's get the um, let's get the Tottenham Hotspur umbrella out. You're standing underneath it now. How are you feeling about everything? Um, I'm I'm still feeling good. I'm still feeling fine. I I, I sense, but I don't know if you sense this as well. I feel like there might there might your question might be charged with this a little bit. I think there is a. a, a a section of our fan base who have half an eye on the transfer window slamming shut, as they mm. say, soonish. And we haven't done a massive amount of business, truth be told, in the in the region of what people would class as, you know, transfers that move the dial, blah, 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 all this stuff. All of um, you know, people will probably also look at Angus' kind of previous comments around he likes getting stuff done early in the window so he can work with players and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that's that that's having an impact on the fan base's mood or sections of the fan base's yeah. mood, should we say? Or maybe just it's just the section that allowed. Uh, I don't think it's probably as bad, but anyway. Um, but I'm fine. I, I'm 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 still very happy. I I don't. I'm not one of those that look at a, a preseason football game and, and base how we're going to perform over the next 38 Premier League games um, based off of that. Um, I, I also tend to try and be quite sort of pragmatic um, about transfers. I like transfers. I like all the drama. I like all the bullshit. I follow all of these fucking ITKs. I like all that shit. I used to do a podcast about it. Like, but... I also feel like I have the other side of it, which mm. where you sort of look at, you've got to look at the bigger picture, right? Like you can't just go out and splash 150 million on one player because you'll end up like Atletico Madrid trying to flog off said player, Joe Felix or whoever. It, you know, we can have many, many, many different names across many different clubs. Um, we're not a club that does that and we never, probably never will be, certainly not under Levy. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, look, I'm good. I think we've had a really, really good uh preseason um we've we've signed some and and we won't see the real kind of fruits of 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 this happening yet but we've signed some unbelievable talent um in 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 Archie Gray and 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 um, Berryval which is his real name do you like that you like that I do. you like you like I've, that I've had a few I've had um, a few different uh different ways of doing it but look, we're all going to be calling him Bergvall yeah. And that's fine because yeah. we're English and, you know, we'll fucking do what we want. But, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, th just those two players on their own. And then you add, you know, players like Moore and Lagshu and, and Divide and, and so forth to have come through. I think the transfer beat dealings we've done have been really, really, really good. And I, I think we are going to see um, long-term results. It might not even be under Ange that these players properly come to the fore. Um, but I, I love good considered signings that aren't um aren't all just you know here and now signings i think dom zelanke is a brilliant signing i've been banging the drum for him since last year actually um I, we did a um a fighting cock patreon podcast around transfer targets last uh, last summer and, and he was one of the names i, I thought we should have gone for um so i think that's a brilliant brilliant transfer as well um i'm really excited to see what the and, and how, how Ange gets all these these players to sort of gel. Um, so, yeah. Do you, do you get into it much with people on Twitter? Do you get into any back and forth <laughs> about signings, about this? Because I'm, I'm just interested to... I've sort of taken a bit of a... You know, my sort of Twitter presence now is just very much like, listen to this podcast or here's my waffling thoughts on something. I, I sort of tend to... <sighs> not kind of scroll through my timeline anymore not really look at stuff anymore because i don't know i've just it's, it's i think it's turned a bit of a corner lately but that's that's a whole that's a different conversation entirely i mean what what i i do have some i do have some complaints about this summer but not really about how much we're spending or who hmm. we're trying to buy or you know about dominic Solanke or anything like that and i'm just interested to know if you've seen anything in particular that has been a consistent theme if there are any are there any positions that people think we still need to strengthen in? What players we maybe need to bring in? I don't know. Yeah, no, I I, th I think there is. Um, and I, I like... 
whereas I am happy, I think I think the window is a is a is a decent seven out of ten. Um, I think there's definitely still room for improvement, but I don't think it's bad at all. I think I think something that I didn't talk about just now, and this is the boring side of transfers, is how much dead weight we've actually managed to cut out. Yeah. Um, like if you look at our transfers out, which you know I get it. Fuck it, we're never going to be look. We're never going to look at at, at Cessignon or Ndombele or you know these these kind of guys again. But um, and that's great. But then you very quickly that kind of fizzes out. But I, it is a huge deal for us because a lot of the players that we've managed to shift have been on really big contracts, and and that's going to give us a lot more wriggle room um, mm-hmm. and room to maneuver. And also, it will just create a better vibe around the around the, 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 the training ground and the, the dressing room and so on that you don't have these these players around whose futures are, are, are uncertain um I think I think some of the the complaints on on Twitter is is I don't think people are a lot of people aren't that enamored with with Solanke and they still think we need you know another strike or someone else who's going to score a ton of goals for us because it still feels like we need to score a few more goals um people people aren't overjoyed um that we haven't signed cover for for a doggy uh, even though i think there's, there's probably other resources there that we don't haven't fully seen yet um people i'm hearing people still are, are and i'm probably actually one of them who still think we need cover or an alternative uh to basuma um because we don't really have another you know dead cert for for the dm role for the deeper lying midfielder um Really, I don't. I don't really see anyone. Else. I don't see Sar in that position. I don't see Benton Core, even though we knew he did the double pivot with Hovia and so on. But Hovia was always the more defensively minded of, of the two. Um, what about Archie? I, yeah, I, someone else in one of my WhatsApps said that said that today. You know, he does have a lot of the the, the attributes that you want. He's very good, um, very good on the ball, incredible, incredible close control, and and he's quite a big guy for an for an eighteen year old. Yeah. Um, you know, he's hundred and almost 119 centimeters tall. He's he's near two. He's, he's massive. rangy, isn't he? Surprisingly, actually, he is. But also, but really good, um, really good technical ability. So you know, there is this kind of misconception about big boys that they 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 don't they're not very good on the ball. But he is very good on the half turn. Very good in tight spaces. Um, I think his range of passing is we're not quite where it needs to be yet. Um, I would also, even though he played, I think he played almost every game for Leeds last season. I do have a I little. Correct. I think you're correct. I do have a li- I, not hundred percent. He's physically, you know, I've just said he's a big boy and so on. Is he physically there yet? Is he ready to play 38 games at Premier League pace and up against quite a lot um, more technically gifted players in a position that he hasn't he, he hasn't played. You know, he's played on midfield and that's fine. But he played all of last season, I think, at right back, right for Leeds and and. Um, I'm not 100% sure where we're going to play him, though. You know, are we going to play him at centre-back? Are we going to play him at right-back? Mm. Are we going to play him in the middle? Um, he are we going to play him at all? I, I are mean, we going to play him at all? And that, but... Exactly, because you look at our midfield, we're, we're reasonably stacked. You know, who would you take out? You're not you're not taking Saar out. I, I think we'll see, even with all his recent cock-ups, I still, still think we'll see Basuma heavily involved. Um, so, you know, does he come in as a rotation? Or is he someone that we're just going to bed in for a year and then I mean, slowly integrate look while, while we're here because i think i think it's all right to raise this at this point it's not jumping ahead or anything like that archie gray has come for a significant amount mm. of money right and i do appreciate that he is you know clearly a very talented young player from what i've seen already but from everything i've been told mm-hmm. you know we're hearing that he's going to be one of England's the next kind of wave of English English superstars that he's going to be an unbelievable player that's the trajectory his career has been on to this point anyway and that's what people the hopes that people hold for him but still 40 what 42 mil I think give or take there's a lot of money for an 18 year old unproven in the Premier League all that type of thing when Tottenham arguably needs somebody right now like we're talking about here now to play in this position to play in this kind of six position to provide some cover now hoibier has gone as well <laughs> basuma is good player but jury's still out on him and you know he's 
doing laughing gas balloons a few days before the season begins, which I know it kind of is one of those things that riles the boomers and all that type of stuff. But I think if we're being honest about it, it's not a very serious mentality, is it? Days before a season starting and you're kind of getting high. It's, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird. Um, we've got Ben Tanker, who is, you know, deciding to racially abuse our captain this summer. So uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a completely yeah. different one. So there's, there's a question there that Tottenham need somebody. We need somebody. Now we've seen that this is a, this is a fragility within this system, the defense, not having the requisite cover that they, they need really. Um, we concede goals for fun. We still seem to be doing that in preseason. Can people be wow. sort? Can can they can their noses be out of joint? It's, it is. It's brilliant. I think it's a great thing that Spurs are investing in tomorrow. That they are buying this next wave of incredible young talent. However, we do have needs that have to be addressed in in the in urgency, really, right? And if if we are still kind of in a place where we're like, can Gray play there? Can Bur Bergvold by all start the season in this position. I can kind of see why people get a bit wound up about that. You know? Yeah. No, I, 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 again, and I think, I think there's other positions where you could talk about that. We haven't even talked about left, uh, spoken about left wing yet. Um, you know, Sonny, as, as much as he's a mate, he's 32, he's just turned 32. Our backup for him is, is Timo Werner. Um, you know, so, so there are other positions like that as well. I mean, I, there's a lot of people who still. I I personally think he's he's great, but a lot of people are still not sure about Brennan Johnson. And um, there's questions around does Kulusevski fit into this to this uh, this Ange style of play and and so on. But I mean, whether he um, does or doesn't, he's an amazing player in my opinion. But a hundred percent, yeah, a hundred percent. But you know, if someone comes in and bids seventy million for him, he's getting sold, isn't he? Yeah. But and I get. I, I think that's that's fine as well to get the right price for him. But anyway, um, I I think you're. I don't mind people having a, 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 a like an a, a opinion about you know that and wanting to see us kind of build in a more in a more progressive way and 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 build depth. I do think I do think it's it's not as easy as just looking at right. We need cover for Basuma. Let's go out and spend all our energy on that because at the same time. We have other needs as well, and whilst um, the need for a, in my opinion, and this is more, and I think we need fullback cover and, and you know number six cover. I think those are our two main priorities right now. Um, if the market's not there for that, and it will take you a full window with all your scouts and all your agents and everyone working full pelt to get a target in, and you still might not get any of your top three or top five or top seven targets. There is a time where you go, okay, shit, we have to just kind of crack on with, with what we've got for this season and look where else we can strengthen. And it might not be, you know, striker, the striker, striker precision is, was top priority, but a lot mm. of people have an argument, but ha well, not have an argument. They have, um, they, they, they have this point, which doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, it makes sense to them that we shouldn't be going for someone like Dom Solanke. Dom Solanke's below us, blah, blah, blah. We should be going out and getting, um, you know, Osman or Vlaovic or someone like that, and we should just be paying them. Um, but if those players aren't available to us for whatever reason, then we shouldn't be trying that. We shouldn't be wasting time on that. We only have a finite amount of, of, of weeks and months to, to do these business dealings in. Um, and it is, it is a puzzle, you know. It isn't just single pieces and on their own merit. It's got to be part of the, the, the wider uh, context of, of building a team. Mm. Um, and there's so many there's so many impacts on it um, and like right now like n name me a a, a, a a defensive mid on the market right now that we should have gone out and gotten I mean yeah Zubi Mendy but he's uh, after the, the tournament he just had he's, yeah. he's he's not coming to us is he like let's be let's be honest um, you know Palinia is going to you know he's, he was not coming to us with Bayern Munich on the, by Munich wasn't it you know um Conor Gallagher looked likely for a while, and then I'm not too sure what happened. But I, I mean, it on, might now. Honestly, honestly, but, I think that one is as base as he's proper Chelsea and he hates Tottenham. Maybe, maybe. 
And and again, and this is the thing, right? So like, we've just named three really, really good players who would, in my opinion, all three come in and replace Basuma, not just be rotation for Basuma. They're those three players, in my opinion, and based on last season's form and so on, I think would all come in and quite quickly take take that role. Um, but... What about Anana? Like, you know, Villa, a team who are competing with us now. We've got to say they finished fourth place last year, competing mm. with us for similar positions in the table, arguably coming in and signing a player that could... Im- I'm, I, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely convinced that Anana would improve us. I think he's mm-hmm. kind of par for with what we have and what we had. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's somebody, he's another name that gets touted, right? And people might look at that and say, well, Villa are getting in, getting in ahead of the queue, ahead of Tottenham now, getting business mm-hmm. done earlier for players that we could in a similar pool that we, a catchment area that we'd be going for, right? Let me think of another metaphor, another pond that we'd be fishing in. There you go. <laughs> yeah, get the fishing analogy in there. Um, no, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, but I don't think he was ever on the list for us. I don't think he necessarily f- fits what we were looking for um, to, to the same degrees. And, and yeah, I don't, I don't think he was really on the list, if I'm totally honest with you. Um I think there's there's um but your your other point around Villa like we can't look down our noses at teams like Villa anymore um okay. which happened quite quickly it's you know and it's all down to an Emery um mostly down to an Emery in my opinion and and, um, and let's be real spending and very rich loads owners. of money yeah, spending yeah, yeah. loads of money very rich owners yeah who are willing to spend um i mean that yeah which which is fine. I mean, they, they, I don't think, I don't, I think we'll still be fine up against Villa. I think we'll finish above Villa this season. Um, I, you know, they've sold Dr. Luis, who is quite a big part of, of, of their success last season. Um, but they are, they're going to be a threat for sure. Um, so let's see. Um, but you're right. We, we shouldn't, and, you know, Spurs, it's funny because everyone always has this idea of us you know no one likes spurs right like could we think too highly of ourselves mm. and there probably is a fraction of that that's probably a little bit true because we do look at clubs like Binner and go and they fucking shouldn't i mean their history is not not that different to ours they've won so, the champions league right so it's yeah. like do you know what i mean just because they've had a few years out in the out in the rough um doesn't mean they can't sort of get back to that um that they're a, on paper, they're a richer club than we are, um, because of their owners. Um, so they do need to watch PSR. They did some shady dealings. Um, I think it was wasn't it Chelsea? They did a they did a yeah, bit of a, I mean, a swap deal. I scratch your back, scratch and, mine. And this is part of the context to the Everton thing as well. Those they're in this kind of little triumvirate of dodgy dealers, aren't they? Really, Villa, Everton, Chelsea, Forest are in there as well. Oh, they okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. look, I mean, look, a, a lot of this that I'm presenting is I am kind of devil's advocating it. I'm not actually really that. Part, the, the main thing I'm put out with Spurs in terms of transfer dealings, because I when we, let's, we'll talk about Dom Solanke because we're kind of, you know, talking around him. I'm really happy with the deal of Dom Solanke. It was it was one of those that when it got floated, I want to say probably last summer, I think I first sort of saw his link to him. I was kind of like, Ooh, I don't know about that. Mm. And then he had a really good season. And you look at him a bit more and you think, well, maybe he is just a late bloomer. Tony, another player we've been heavily linked with, another late bloomer. Maybe he's just coming good now. Um, and you watch kind of compilations of him and you see him providing a problem for teams in areas in which we need somebody to be creating problems, Right. I think about the amount of chances we created, the amount of balls that we swept into either into the box or just outside the box in the middle of the park with, you know, on our counters, that sort of thing. Somebody that can be a real presence up top as well. Somebody that can hold the ball up well. In the sort of piecemeal occasions we saw Richarlison, we saw how beneficial it was to have somebody with a bit of stature up front. And this isn't to do Son any disservice. I just think we can all agree that Son is best played off the left. We've seen already in pre-season Son scoring a Son goal again. We were all like, where's that been? Where's that Son been? Oh, hang on. We forced him to play through the middle through most of last season. 
So I, 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 I really like the idea of Solanke in that. I think my only, the only, I guess, thing that's kind of irritated me about this whole deal is why well, we've gotten it done a week before the season starts. Again, you know, when we, we know we've needed him, we've been interested in him for a long time. And it feels like, reading between the lines, it feels like he's had a, what, a 60 mil release clause. We've ended up paying 57 mil for him. It just feels a bit kind of Levy getting into one of these willy waving contests with another chairman as he seems to like doing. Um, and that's, that's kind of the, that's the only thing that's kind of irritated me about this deal. But I, I like Dom Solanke. Do I think City, Liverpool, Arsenal, maybe even Chelsea United, but less so them. I'm not so bothered about them, but those three in particular, I'm mentioning up top. Do they look at Spurs signing Dom Solanke and really get that worried? Does it send a shiver down their spine? Probably not. But does every signing need to be a statement? I, I, I don't think it does. And I'm perfectly happy with the fact that he is going to be somebody that will play well within this system and likely, hopefully, score a lot of goals for us, right? No. Yeah, that that I've heard that argument quite a lot, and and you know, no offense, Jack, but you it's know, fine. doesn't take a massive brain to say that argument, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> but I jest, obviously. Um, sort of half. <laughs> you're just little, maybe thirty-four <laughs> percent of it was a joke. Um, but well, you you sort of put a spin on it. You said, would that would this make them sort of you know scared of us shivering their boots and all that sort of stuff. Whereas most people say, would he get into Arsenal's, City's, Liverpool's team? No, of course he wouldn't. He'd get into Chelsea's. Um, but, you know, he'd probably get into United's because Hoyland's injured and they they have no one else up front, um, as you saw in the committee show. Um, that said, yeah, he probably wouldn't get into the top three teams uh, in the league right now, but there aren't that many other strikers on the market again. And this is like, it's a boring argument, but outside of Someone who's available, which, you know, we know Osman's available, Lukaku is available, Lukaku doesn't get into those three. Um, Osman probably possibly does, but but you know, he gets into Arsenal's team. He certainly doesn't get into City's team. And um, probably has wages three times the size of Slankies. again, and absolutely, and that's a good point. But also uh, the the boring part point is is like you said, it's the system. It's it's not about just getting the best uh striker on the, on the market constantly it's got to be around does this player fit into the system and then the the element to Solanke's game that made him have this amazing season um which massively boosted by the the the, the change in manager from from Karen Hill to Tiriola and, and and the change of style and, and tactics and so on um really gets the best out of Solanke and and that's that's what I'm so hopeful about and that what most people who are excited about Solanke coming in are, are hopeful about and he is different uh, to many other strikers out there. I mean, you wouldn't see, you know, one of the big things that the big big qualities for Sanke that everyone raves on about is his his final third pressing uh, numbers. Um, last season, he was only he was second in the league, only behind Son, um, which tells you exactly what you want to know that that mm. he fits into the system, and that's a big part of his of his uh, of his style of play. Um, he's exceptional in the box, which is again where we create our chances. You know, we create high XG chances, often from the wing, where we where we ha- you know we look to create width, um, and then use our wingers to create um, to create high XG chances. And 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 he just fits into those two situations perfectly. And there aren't you know out of these other strikers that everyone raves on about that they think we should go and sign, they they don't really fit into this. They offer different. And they, you know, they're very good in, in other aspects of the game. But Solanke really does fit what we're looking for. Um, so yeah, I forgot what you even asked, but um, yeah, I wanted to get that in there. It's more just a conversation, mate. Not really. Even, yeah. Not really even a question. Do you know what I mean? It was so nice being on pause with you, Jack. You, you just, you know, just talk. That's it's just, 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 yeah. just two guys. Be yourself, out, man. Just shooting the shit, you know. <laughs> That's what, it is. That's what it is. Praying to God, people will listen and yeah. think we're clever. Please, please, Dad. please, please, please listen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a disappointment. 
Okay. I do oh, this. I talk about Daddy, Tottenham. can you hear me? To tens of people. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, mate, uh. um, let's, 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 let's hype. Let's, let's, let's get hyped. There's, there's some good stuff happening. There's some good yeah. stuff happening. Bergvall, Bivol, whatever we want to call him. He's absolutely yeah. class, right? And I kind of have a feeling that the club were probably aware that he was in this sort of, should we say, like Delhi bracket of player in so much as we signed Delhi at a similar age. And I think probably people knew he was going to be ready for the first team. Feels like Lucas, let's call him that, is going to be uh, is going to be a probably semi regular first team player because I would say that he has provided the team with a noticeable lift every time he's come on during pre season, right? I think that's fair to say, yeah, for sure. What do you What do you like about him in particular? Because I'd, no pressure on the lad, no pressure on the lad. True, sure. but I do have to say. There are shades of Luka Modric about him for me. I, I honestly feel that, like the way he kind of moves around the pitch, the way he kind of recycles possession, people say, the way he can kind of burst mm. into space. I don't know if he's maybe quite as like hench as Luka was back in the day, um, but I think he's still kind of got a bit about him. Um, I, 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 I like I like what I see. I like what I see. Yeah, I, I may I love it. I think he's... So obviously, I I am from the Scandi part of the world, and um, we've covered that he, bit already, mate. Right? We have. I know. I just it. I just have to mention it. You know. I see I'm why Flav. So I see why Flav gives you such a hard time about it now. Right? Monks Whatever. and all that sort of thing. Monks. Yeah. Um. But listen, listen. He is like a god in Sweden. Um. He is getting to Kulusevski levels of 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 fame. We're not quite talking Ibrahimovic, but he is like. They're, they're very 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 proud of him um and you know as a as a part of the world he is he's a shining talent um you talk about you know rising ballers across europe and he is probably in the top five he is he is incredible he's gonna be incredible but he is he's got it now like we're seeing flashes of it now um his touch is unbelievable i i love how he's like people always talk about, you know, maturity and so on. Maturity show, shows in different different ways. But if you talk about playing maturity, it's about it's about you know not just having natural ability, um, but but also just having an aura and a charisma of yeah. of yeah, I know what I'm doing. Like I, I'm not I'm not I'm not scanning constantly. I don't look nervous on the ball. And he just he it's just snap decisions, low amount of touches. You know, wants to be in pockets of space. Is aggressive. Hasn't you know, isn't afraid of trying things. Um, so I, I think he's going to be, be outstanding for us. Um, I, like you touched on the physical side of it. He definitely looked tired towards the end of the preseason games where he started, um, which, you know, look, we were in, we were in Korea and it was like hundred percent humidity and it was very warm and da -da -da -da. so I get it. So everyone would be knackered, right? But he definitely has more so than, players like Gray and, and so on. And I think even, you know, the academy prospects um, who are more used to to playing at a higher level. Um, the Swedish league is not anywhere near. I mean, the Danish league is trash, but it's better than the Swedish league. Um, he is will that need... going to be something that you're going to get at it about? I've got a few Swedish uh, Hope I hope okay. so. Like, look, I, I take every opportunity I can to dig out Swedes and literally I, I get no shit from I've them. got to say, I did just... On a side note, now we've now we've un, uh, uncorked this one. Well, we did a because we're just you know typical Brit tourists. We did a canal tour when we went to Copenhagen last year, well, and honestly, yeah. our tour guide couldn't stop digging out the Swedes. It kept being like, "This is where the Swedes tried to invade, and we beat them. This is yeah. where the Swedes invaded this part, and we hired a load of Dutch pirates to beat them there." and he he basically just kept digging out Swedes all the way. He he checked first: are there any Swedes on the tour? There weren't, and he just kind of went <laughs> double barrel. So this is a, is this kind of an England Scotland thing? Or... Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's exactly all the same right. thing. It's just like it's just a bit of you know neighbourly ribbing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, they are ghastly people. They're awful, but you know, we we all take the piss out of each other. Um, 
I think there was like, I don't know if you've seen this, these maps of like who takes the piss out of most, who the most. Um, and I think in Scandinavia, I don't actually think it's even the Swedes. I think it's actually the Norwegians that we all take the piss out of because they're even, they're even worse. But they're super rich, so who gives a shit, you know? They have oil money coming out the, the, their backs. Um, so, yeah. And but Lucas Berger, you're, you're happy with him, though, even if he Very is happy. Swedish. You'd prefer Huge. if he was Danish, I get that, but... Yes. Well, we, we almost did... Um, you know, there, there are a few Danes sort of in and around our peripheral. No, no, no one, unfortunately, um, as good as as Barry Ballard. Um I'm not even saying that right, Berger. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we did we we did look at Bruni Badaj, um, who I didn't pronounce properly either. But he comes from a Danish club at least, very sweet. She's also another really really massive um, young talent. Um, plays in Denmark, FCK. But yeah, I I think I think I think. We just need to be a little bit more patient with with uh, with Bergvall than we than we we probably can afford ourselves to be with Gray. I think Gray is, even though they're the same age and so on, I think he's possibly slightly more of the the complete player and someone that we can actually play um, from this seat. I mean, look, he cost Gray cost four times as much as as, as Bergvall, so you would like to think that we could utilize him earlier. How much? Um, yeah, I was going to say. I, 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 actually lost track of how much Bergwell was because I thought he was about 30 odd mil as well but no, it's only about 10 really wow yeah it was only around 10 um so there is a bit of a gamble there even though most like not a gamble in terms of you know the outlay and so on um but he is just quite young and he's from a league which is like I mean we're not even talking league one or league two mm. probably talking like Almost not leech left. It's it's not so much a criticism; it's just an observation. The the only, I guess, probably concern I have about him adapting to the Premier League is that I think there were just a few moments. I think it was against the K League Eleven. I noticed a few times <laughs> when uh, you know, basically grown men, big players, were getting up in his face, getting up in his grill. He didn't seem that comfortable with it, and I was kind of wondering mm. this, you know. Premier League is another level for intensity, for physicality. Might take we might need to be patient with him as he gets yeah, you know, he's still he's 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 a boy. Like he, well, he might be eighteen, but he's he's boyish. He's quite he's he's not slight. I don't think slight is a fair way to to describe him, but he's he's not big. Let's put it that way. Um it might take a bit of a bit of time to come up to speed with things, but somebody with the kind of I would say the ability, the way in which he seems to read the game, his bullishness just with the ball at his feet, at least. He doesn't seem to play with much fear, much inhibition. Well, I think that will stand him in, you know, in, in good stead in the league in terms of adapting to it. Um, so you back him to do well. I just want to kind of know from you, because this is, this is a bit more your ballpark than mine anyway, mate. Where do you play him in this system? Where does he fit? Because I see a lot of people already saying, We've "Got to drop Madison, bring him in instead of Madison." Is that is that where you see him playing in that sort of ten-ish kind of role? Yeah, yeah, progressive eight, I'd say. I think I feel he feels a bit more like I a box that, spot. The caveat, Progr progressive eight, progressive midfielder. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> this this is the thing, and this you know, this is one of the things I love about Ange. He, he gives us so much room to maneuver, right? Because he's always going, "Oh, you know, I don't really just talk about." Uh, positions or formations it's more about spaces you take up as he farts and <laughs> sniffs it all in um you know and, and Bergwald is a, is a good example of that um someone who can operate in different and, and Archie Gray as well um and a, really a lot of our midfield if you see Madison I mean Madison isn't a classic 10 Madison comes deep a lot um to receive the ball and then progress it from there and then be part in the final third as well um and that's that's what you need from a quote quote ten in in our system to actually act more like an eight in a lot of ways. Um, but you are, I guess, you're at the emphasis of your end product is focused on what you do in the final third, or how you sort of, you know, do you create that expected assist or, or, or xg, or maybe do you know do you go all the way and score? Um, so I, I think Bergwald does sit in that in that kind of um kind of bracket um as as a rotation offers uh, offers as a rotation option 
um, for Madison. I don't think he's... I did see a lot of people going, especially after the last game here, going, oh, you know, Madison can't start. He still looks like a shadow of former self and so on. Um, I don't know that the answer is to push Bergvall into to it just yet. Because to your point, physically, he still needs to get there. Mentally, he needs to get there. Although he does look... He looks assured um, yeah. that you've seen some of the behind the scenes content and so on. He seems like he's he's fitted in. He did a he did a, a an interview him and Kulusevski where they spoke. I mean, his English is impeccable, um, and he just speaks very you know in a very sort of grown up and mature manner. Um, so I I don't think we have tons to sort of work on there, but I think. Surely, just in terms of the, I and mean, that's a very gammon thing to talk about, right? <laughs> like he needs to get in the gym, needs to bulk up, do you know what I mean? He'll get, he'll get knocked off the ball. Um, but it is true to a degree. You do need to be in incredible physical shape, not just in terms of your muscle mass, but also just in terms of how how far you can fucking run. Um, and he will be relied upon to run a lot if he's going to come in and be a viable Madison. Um, backup rotation option. How are you feeling now? We're on Madders, the dart throwing one. How are you, how are you feeling about him, mate? Because he started the season, you know, he's in blinding form. Um, mm. when we first signed him, had a big injury. Looked, I mean, to even say he looked a shadow of himself in the tail end of the season is probably being kind. Um, form's been a bit mixed in preseason, and I think I think we got to be careful not to be too kind of laser focused on players coming back up to speed again after a summer of probably boozing and eating chips and stuff at the end of the day let's be real do you know what i mean that's kind of part of part of the issue right they they they're coming up to speed again that's why they're playing these games do you have do you have any concerns about him though at all um because he seems to yeah, be kind of I mean, the player that everyone's focusing on, really. Him or Son, which... Mm. You know. Well, I mean, he's he's incredibly important to, to what we do and, and part of what... Part of what we... we we're going to... You know, what, we, what, what we got him in to do was, was fill some of that sort of creativity and, and, and um, you know, that sort of build-up gap that uh, we had from when Kane left. And, and, and he, to your point did that exceptionally well um, at the beginning of the season and then had a, a real, real quite dramatic drop-off. Um, and it did, didn't get tons of optimism coming out of pre-season. Pre-season is pre-season. You can't put very much weight on it and so on and so forth. But um, it just, it still, it feels like to me, like he was, and I said this a few times towards the end of last season, it felt like he was carrying still, carrying some sort of injury or did he need some sort of surgery or what was he didn't feel like he was a hundred percent there physically or mentally. And I think the mental thing is probably where it kind of lies is uh, potentially we put too much, um, you know, responsibility on his shoulders early on, but I mean, he's, he's 27. Um, he wants, he has aspirations to be a, a an England great and so on. You, you, you need to be able to kind of perform at those levels now. Um, so let's see, like, let's let's give it the first sort of, I'd say, at least five games, probably probably all the way up to, to eight, ten games before we sort of see where he's at this season. But he is in, incredibly important for us, not just in terms of, of him as the player, but in terms of the, the role he has in the team. He's, you know, he's vice captain as well as being our number 10. Um, we rely on him for to be our, our primary creative output. Um, we rely on him to score goals. He only scored four goals, four goals in the league for us last season. That's not enough. That he needs to get into double digits consistently. Doesn't need to be twenty thirty, but like ten or above, um, really. Um, you know, and and to be a to be a role model as well to lead mm. the way for those for those players coming through. And and yeah, I I he struggled for for probably two thirds of last season. Maybe that's been harsh. Maybe maybe only uh, half last season, but but. You know, he still ended up being quite. I think he had double digits in terms of goals and assists, so he was still very important to us. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it this season it's not like make or break season or anything. He's twenty seven. He's still got at least three years at the top of his game, but he needs to 
it would be great to see some positive improvement. That's for sure. Dare I say, like back in our day, Mark, people might have called him a luxury player, and I don't, I don't really know if that term has much, if it really actually means anything. But if I am to take something from that, there's a part of me that feels when I watch Madison, I kind of think he's generally at his best when somebody just gets the ball to him and he can just kind of act on instinct. He can either kind of just ping a ball forwards, which he has the ability to do, or put the afterburners on and kind of run into space. He's a lot nippier than I think people give him credit for than I realised before we signed him. He's good on the ball. He's, he can beat players. I mean, again, he wasn't really shown that at the tail end of last season, but he can beat players. I've seen him beat players. Do you think there's an argument to sort of say that we ask him to do too much or Ange asks too much of him in this system. He's having to do too much kind of leg work, for example. And hence, why would we sign a player like James Madison if we're asking him to do a load of donkey work, if you like, um, as opposed to just being that guy who can pretty much do a few flicks, tricks, long shots, whatever, to add a bit of spark into the system, to add a bit of spark into the team, to try and make opportunities, to try and make chances. Because it felt like, it felt like, Towards the end of last season, we were having a go at him in the same way a lot of people used to have a go at Harry Kane, as in like, why is he dropping back? Why is he back in his own half? Why is he all the way back there, kind of on the edge of the box when the opposition team were having a corner? That type of thing. Or do you think that's just what somebody has to do in this team? I think that's just kind of part of the responsibility, this collective responsibility in this Ange system. Yeah, I, th- I think... I think- I think part of everything of what you just said really be, be of both. Um, so there's certainly a, a requirement on players across the outfield ten to um, to be very very physical, to 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 put a lot of work in, and and you know we play an incredibly um, high output style of play, you know high pressing, um, high up pitch all the time. So. So you've got to both be physically fit, but you've got to be mentally there as well because it is challenging. You know, you're not, a lot of the time, you know, see our high line, right? Like defenders aren't always super comfortable playing super high lines because there's a lot of responsibility on you if you're out of possession or if, you know, you're quite open to transitions and so on. Um, so there's probably an argument there that Madison um, maybe, I don't know if it's like, do we did we expect too much? I don't think we maybe 100% had the the team to play the way that Ange wanted for us last season. I think a few players did get burnt out towards the end. Possibly it happened slightly earlier with Madison than maybe players like Son or so on. But there were some some big players that didn't have great ends to the season. Um, I think also, you know, I, I think Solanke will be good for a player like Madison because mm. it will take some of that pressing responsibility off Madison's show. Because to your point, whilst Madison is an incredible presser, it takes a lot of energy for him to to press constantly um so he did like i mean i I remember us thinking like half an hour into games last season we looked knackered um like half an hour in we literally looked dead dead and buried um and i I think a lot of it is is physical but i think some of it is mental as well so i think i think once he gets solanke solanke takes some of that final third pressing off his off his hands I think you'll still see Madison drop deep to, re- to to receive the ball and, and kind of progress it from there. I think that's part of part of what Ange wants him to do. Um, it also is part of how we play. You know, it's quite fluid in terms of positions on the pitch. Um, but I think, and again, that, that's why I go back to it. Solanke is such a good player for us because a lot of other strikers out there wouldn't take that. They wouldn't go in and put that hard work in. Um, I mean, there's games where Haaland goes through a first half and has less than 10 touches, you know, and doesn't do any of the closing down. But he doesn't need to either because he has the, the rest of the team does that work. It's not necessarily required upon him to, to do it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think, and again, I think, I think a player like Son, I think we'll see, we'll see an improvement as well because there will be someone there uh, to take again some of that responsibility off his shoulders. Um, you could argue, well, why did Rishi not get put in, bless you? Um, yeah. get get brought in earlier and, and um, I just think he's just a better player than Rishi is unfortunately the, yeah. the answer to that feels that way not unfortunately it? how do you feel let me ask let me throw one at you how do you feel about Rishi not not going anywhere 
and obviously it didn't. There was a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know, Richie has to go. We won't sign. We won't sign Talanki or Tony or anyone else unless we sell Richie." It's 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 back to old, you know, Levy up says old tricks. You have to sell before you can buy, and so on. How do you feel about the prospect? Because it looks like Richie's staying now, right? Saudi is is out of the out of the picture. No one else really was in for him. Yeah, I'm happy about it. I didn't, you know, I would have been annoyed had we gone into a season with just Richarlison. Um, I don't think he's, I don't think he's a bad player. I'm just not convinced he's actually that good. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's that aside, his injury record isn't particularly great. Um, I felt this strange sense of like protectiveness over him when I saw him linked to Saudi and I saw the lots of the sort of Al Ali fans all really going for him, atting him. Um, lots of bots, lots of this kind of thing, just basically saying, you know, stay in England or go back to Brazil. And all. it's all really quite grim stuff, actually, that they're all atting him with. I just thought, I don't want this lad to go to a hostile environment like that. Look, come on, keep him at spur. Like, he's not done anything wrong. Like, he's always been a, he's always seemed like a good, a good lad, a good character about the place. And he's not been terrible. I know he, he, he had a streak last year in which he looked good and it, kind of petered off and again it it just brings up questions about his viability as a as a top level player where he needs to be available quite often and be able to maintain those levels but I'm I'm more than happy having him as a backup to Solanke if you like and I think I think actually having that competition from a player who's a similar age who one of the things that we didn't talk about that I think I really quite like about Solanke, even though I, I don't know him personally, but from everything you hear about him, everything you see from him, the way he talks, he seems like a good kid. He seems like a nice guy. And I know that will rile again certain elements of football fans. Oh, yeah, I want nice guys. That's why we don't win anything. You need Everyone needs to be horrible. And I, I don't know if I agree with that entirely. Um, maybe certain players need to have an edge in them or whatever but I don't think every one of them needs to and I feel that like I, I don't know I, I, I kind of feel like having Stolanke there might give Richarlison a bit of a boost and we've seen you know we've seen he can be a useful player um, look now if we were offered similar to what we paid for him 40-50 mil from a villa mm -hmm. somebody like that and we know that we're going to go on and bring in somebody else I don't know Ivan Tony or whatever as well. You go into the season with Tony and Slanky, fine, but we we need to have two big options there. I really like the look of Lancashire. Um, I did a tweet at the, in in summer, basically saying, you know, Lancashire looks probably like he could be as good as any twenty, thirty million pound sort of signing we could make. Ah, no, yeah, you're just playing into Levy. No, no, I don't. I don't mean that. I don't mean let's just keep him as our. What I'm saying is. Bring this lad into the first team. Bring him into the fold. Let him be backup for Europa games, League Cup games. Let's give him some minutes in the first team. I'm not saying let's rely on him week in, week out. But I think having Solanke, having Richarlison and having somebody like Lancashire on the, you know, around those two, I think is good. And I think that puts us in a much better place going into this season as opposed to us just having Solanke or just having Richarlison. I mean, just having Richarlison would have been, I think I would have been losing my ass a lot more than I am now. And I, I, I'm sort of, I'm trying to ask myself if I'm just, if I'm as happy with Solanke as I am because it's just somebody else or if I'm actually happy with him on individual merit. And it's probably a bit of both, I reckon, in there. But I do like Solanke. I do think he's decent. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming what, I mean, are you pretty similar? How are you feeling? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, very, very similar, really. Which is the boring answer. Um, I think, I think Richarlison will be. I think he's good as a as a bench option for us, right? Because he comes on, and you see, you saw this almost every single game when he came on last season. He comes on, he's hungry, he wants, he doesn't doesn't mind it. He's quite. I think, I want to say he's quite strong mentally because I think he's gone through quite a lot, and he's he's at a place now where he's not he's not a hundred percent mentally, but he's aware of all the things mm. that are going on and the things he needs to work on, which is a huge strength on its own. Um 
a lot of the time the people that you think are super super strong mentally they they're very different once they start opening up um being open is not a bad thing so i i you know i, I think he's um i think he's a great option um off the bench for us he brings something slightly different to to Solanke, but um can do a lot of the same things just not necessarily to the same level um and i think he's just he's a good guy to have around you know like he's he's very well liked across the across the squad he's funny he's a good guy like he, he embodies the right values um and isn't afraid to you know he, he had all this this all the political stuff last summer and 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 Bolsonaro and all that sort of stuff um anti Bolsonaro sorry um so i think he's a good guy to yeah he's he's 50 million so it's not like i don't think he should go on and be the club mascot or whatever we still need to be realistic about it but i mean he's, he scored did double digits for us last year right like yeah. in 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 the league so that's no mean feat and he wasn't starting by far in our starting of the game so that's not bad at all and and let's not just throw away um 11 or 12 goals um that we could hopefully get from him this season as well um so so yeah i, I know i know we've sold emerson so it's going to be slightly less amazing social media content now but hopefully he'll get another body and and we can get some good lulls from him um but no i think i think it's fine i wasn't i never really saw him go to saudi to your point that the fans didn't treat the news of him coming very well at all but i mean i don't i just doesn't feel like the right time in his career either um and with his political beliefs and so on i don't think he's he wouldn't enjoy it there let's let's then let's not go into that anymore um so yeah i'm fine with it i'm fine look like I would I have been happier if we'd yes sold him to a club where he was okay about going to your point Villa or who went back to Everton for fifty mil, um, and we'd have gotten in Ivan Tony. Yes, I'd be happier than where we are, but I'm not. I'm not mad about it at all. Um, there's a lot to be said as well. Is is you've got a we got rid of a lot of big players again last window, um, who had been around for a while. Uh, you've there's there's a Again, it's boring, but there is a point around sort of squad kind of unity and calm. And when you bring in when you bring in wholesale changes, season upon season, window after window, you do upset that balance a little bit. Um, and we still have tons of work to do on on getting the balance of the entire first eleven um, set. So, so yeah. So if if we don't need to rock the boat, let's not. Let me uh, let's 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 end on this one, mate. Let's end on a on a on a big hype, Mikey Moore. Turned 17 on the weekend and has just signed a brand new contract. It's supposed to be lasting for many years. Um, I think it's a four or five year deal or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's said to be the highest paid teenager in the club's history. You know, that, that probably doesn't come as a massive surprise. Are you uh, are you pumped about him? Oh, mate, I'm so... Do you know what? It feels weird, right? We're both here. We could be his dad. Yeah. And I'm sat there go, oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's no, like... it's bizarre, Ooh. isn't it? Literally turned 17 yesterday. Mental. But, mate, he looks unreal. He looks so good. Um, I loved his... I don't know if you've had a time had time to, to watch some of the, the content from the club um, about him today. They did a, a decent little interview with him where he just sat and just spoke for a while. Um, speaks really well. Um, just seems, like, really grounded, really mature. But, I mean, like... Some of those performances in in the the preseason, did you, like he full on had a go at Kingsley Coleman. Yeah, he was going for like, it, wasn't he? Fuck, he was in there, mate. He was like, oh, getting his head in there. And he's not. The, oh, thing, the funny thing is, like, because I do, I have seen a lot of people last year being like, just give Mikey Moore a break. He's only sixteen. Kid's a bull. Like he's like a young yeah. Wayne Rooney. He's a he's a big 100%. old lump. You know, he's not yeah. he's not a kid. Even though I mean, he he literally is. But you know what I'm saying. I know what you mean. Yeah, and I think I think he's. Oh, I thought, you know, I'll tell you what, the one thing that worries me is how many of these, we've just hyped up four or five of our young players. I mean, we haven't even really talked about, uh, you know, Alfie Devine or no. any of these other players. Ashley Phillips is coming back and we've got Buskovic coming, I think, I mean, at the he end looks of the year unreal. or yeah, January, got, February. Whatever. January, February, like, yeah. He looks mate, unbelievable, doesn't he? Though? We've got some unreal young talent and, and you know, Mikey Moore is, is, is up there probably in the top three of our sort of, I would say our most exciting young players, um, 
and and well, even across England. I mean, there was there was so many clubs in for him. And I just I love that he's you know one of our own, all that sort of stuff. And it, that's that's a cliche a lot of the time, but it's it does mean so much. It's you know, but Ange might have a little bit of a headache this season. Where does he fit? Where does he fit all these players in? Because and I, you know, you're not going to see because you're not going to see more against Leicester. You're not going to see Bergwall. You're not going to see. I mean, you might see Gray. I think the Gray is the biggest chance of happening. But um, you know, he's the first sort of five, seven, eight games of the season is going to be pretty much the players that finished last year. I think Solanke will start. I think Solanke will will be a guaranteed starter. But I don't think any of the others are. Um, but man, Mikey Moore could be on real. Michael Moore could be Mikey Moore could be the next. You know. Harry Kane level English player where generational and he's spoken about as as a great um and earlier than than Kane as well um so yeah I think we've got we've got a potential superstar around no pressure though lad no pressure <laughs> nah, it's all right well he's turned 17 now it's fine we can talk about that it's fine um You're professional now I, I, I do you think the season's good just give me a quick season preview mate like what do you think oh, where do you think we're gonna finish Okay, let me. I'll tell you what. I'll put to you just what? just quick fire. I'm going to put to you what I put to Twitter on the on the weekend. All right. So bearing in mind, imagine this Solanke deal is our only piece of our only significant piece of business right now, and it's done yeah. pretty much. Maybe a Lascelles out, maybe some other minor mm-hmm. players in. But this is it. What Spurs' is final league position? Third. Ooh, okay. Are we going to win a cup? And if so, which cup? Oh, God. Um, I think we've got a good shot at the Europa League. Okay. And I don't know why I say that, but um, I really... Because I, I just... The domestic cups are so tough now, man. Because City are just unreal. Like they are a machine. I don't know if you watched the Community Shield, but they didn't. Even, they didn't play that well. But you know, they 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 just throw these players. You know, Oscar Bob is just this absolutely unreal talent. Yeah. Twenty one, twenty one year old. You got Rico Lewis, who's what nineteen, and then they just bring in James McAtee, and he's just all, all of a sudden he's just unreal as well. So I, I think I think the domestic cups are going to be tough. Um, I think City's got their eye on another treble or quadruple as they always do until Guardiola leaves um but yeah I man I think I think the Europa League could be a that could be a goer for us this I'm not 100% up on who's actually in the Europa League so I need to look into that because that can have quite a big impact it's not a bad it's not a bad um it's not a bad lineup these these days though everyone's quite good in Europe um I know that's the one like I'd love to win that. Like, yeah. it's so nice to win a European trophy. It would be. I was, be glorious, I was mate. really... You, on, mate, you'd be there it's watching them bring it down the high road on a was, bus. It'd be unbelievable. A hundred percent. People say whatever they want. People said what they wanted about West Ham winning the conference league. It, uh, Spurs would still be great. It would be great for us to win that. You know? We would have fucking loved winning the conference league. Come on. <laughs> We can't say we're above a trophy until we can confidently turn up and just absolutely hit it, not. Right? No, so a hundred percent. Top scorer at all competitions. Solanke got back, my boy. Okay. Can't be Solanke. Player of the season. Uh, are you going to do a young player of the season as well, or are you just going to do a player of the season all uh, round? I thought that far ahead. Let, yeah, let's do both. <laughs> let's do player of the season and young player of the season. Go on. I, st- I still son. Well, I think no, son I've will done, still actually, be I've done breakout star, so we'll call that young right. player of the season. Here you go. Okay, okay, fine. I think Son will still be our player of the season. Okay. Um, breakout star. I think breakout star will be Archie Gray. Archie Gray. And the scapegoat Boom. of the season. Now now your boy Hjorbier has gone. I'm, I need to find a new victim. Yeah, who's, who's it going to be? Oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait for you and your the rest of your Gamarati to. Because to... <laughs> who's, who's in there? There is no one in there who's. Ange. You know. James Madison. Nah, you can't go for it. I think it might be Madison, you know, which kills me because he's... But the thing, he's got... Yeah, he's quite thin-skinned, though, Madison. So um, I think it could affect him if he, if he does become the scapegoat. Um, but who is the scapegoat? Jesus. Uh, Brendan Johnson. Yeah, that's a safe bet. 
safe bet. I think so. An, an, an unfair one, but we'll leave it there, listen. Mr. Monez. But thank you for jumping in um, and Very doing good. this Pleasure. pod, kicking off the season in style, I would say, mate. So if you have enjoyed the pods, just, you know what I mean? Like it, share it, all that type of thing. Um, and keep listening. Bye.